Ron, in the Packer way, I, I got to go to the first sentence of your prologue. Brett Favre wasn't the best quarterback you scouted, but he was the most intriguing. As we sit here today, what did you know that a lot of other people didn't? You know what, I'm not really sure about that, except I had such a strong feeling for Brett Favre as, as a quarterback, as a competitor, and as a player. I thought, unquestionably, he's the best quarterback in the 1991 draft. That's not right. I felt in 1991 he was the best player in the draft, and, it, and that proved to be so after his career with the Packers. What was it about him? We all saw the cannon arm and the, the gunslinger thing that everyone likes to use that word where he just was like a cowboy and walking into a, anywhere and take on anyone. What else was it about him that made him so good? I think he, well, first of all, like you said, he had a cannon for an arm. There's no question about that. I always thought that when he took the field, it tilted in his team's favor. He was a perfect quarterback from a release standpoint. Regardless of where the feet were, his release was always the way it was drawn up to be. He could throw any type of pass. He was a consummate competitor again, the ultimate warrior, if you will, and uh, just one heck of a football player. He was a difference maker that you had to have on your team, didn't you? No question about that. The, uh, I'd spent uh, uh, two previous years in a situation with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where we did not have a quarterback. When I came here, I was under the same impression. We needed to upgrade the quarterback position. He was made available, and I jumped at that opportunity. You, you touched on it a little bit, but of all the things that made Brett Favre great, I mean, he truly was the toughest quarterback to play the position, wasn't he? He certainly was during my time here. Uh, it's incredible. Just stop and think about the fact that of all the games that that guy played, every game he played, he never missed a start while he was here. Even after I left, he never missed a start. And, uh, you know, he started that thing going against Cincinnati, <clears throat> 1992. Kept it going for a long time. He is, uh, my whole experience, I spent 38 years in this game. And somebody has to be the best player. He's by far the best player I've ever been around. You mentioned the Kittrick Taylor play, but I remember Sterling Sharp at Detroit across his body down the field, hitting Andre Risen to start the Super Bowl. I mean, he had so many big plays. Are there any ones that stand out for you that maybe people don't say, oh, that was a great far play, but it was a great far, far play that I know a quarterback only he could make? The one I remember, certainly fond, very finally, is the pass to Kittrick Taylor. And uh, I mean, after that, he never let up. He kept it going. Uh, he had some tremendous games against our arch rival, the Chicago Bears. And uh, yeah, yeah, he, he started a thing going where he did something, and, and I was part of that, that uh, Lombardi, Hallis, Lambeau never did. And uh, I think was, he went 10 straight while I was here with seven straight in Chicago against the Bears. Uh, just a tremendous player. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that, but he is a remarkable guy in the sense of his ability to play the position on a football team. And when you talk to his teammates, he was, uh, some people thought he was the man. And sometimes those star players can be above the rest of the roster. Brett was a guy. I mean, you ask the 53rd guy on the roster who may have had one year here in Green Bay or a 10 year starter, he kind of treated them all the same, didn't he? I think he did, yes. You know, I, I kind of had to stay away from things like that nature, but hey, he's a great player, and the fact that he's going into the Packers Hall of Fame and the fact that he's having his jersey re number retired bespeaks of what he did here for the Green Bay Packers.